Today we're continuing, inshallah, the uh, series or the sequence that we started two weeks ago. I apologize for the last couple of weeks. I had a, a bad flu or a serious flu. Alhamdulillah, I am almost over. Uh, occasionally, I will uh, have to uh, go to uh, a break of coughing. So you are all far away, so you don't have to worry about that. I've got my napkins and tissues close by. Um, uh, Abdullah, at the end of uh, last session, pointed to me that I, I should have summarized what we talked about in uh, some concise points so it will kind of uh, sink in and be remembered. So uh, I promise that I will do that in future events. So to see how well things went last time and how much you guys remember, I'd like to uh, uh, hear from you what are the major things that you kind of remember and whether you were able to implement them or not. So any volunteers to remind us of some of the points that were discussed last time? If none, obviously that means I failed. And Abdullah was right. So, yes. If you don't have something, you cannot deliver it. <laughs> okay, you can deliver what you don't have. If you don't have it, you can deliver it. Right. What else? Another point. Okay. Uh, it's my first time. <laughs> no, uh, Hammer. Huh? Hammer. William Hammer. What do you remember from last time? You need to be uh, concise and precise in your expressions. You need to be precise and concise in your expressions. Your expressions. Right. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Always hold your tensions in like anger before it gets. Always. Hold your anger. Hold, Hold your, your, your anger and in front of your kids. All right. Did you get to practice that? What? Did you get to practice that? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> no. Okay. Well, these are uh, but a few of the points, and I'm sure that uh, they will get uh, iterated throughout the discussion, inshallah. All right. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to start where we ended last time, and I concluded by a question, and the question was, if a child is responsible before Allah by the age of puberty, shouldn't we be taking that into consideration when we raise a child so that they will also be responsible before the society, should be mature enough to um, conduct themselves properly in all aspects by that age. And the thing is, unfortunately, we uh, don't really think about that point much. And we don't uh, end up uh, with uh, uh, kids in the 20s and the 30s that have not matured enough as a result of uh, a lack of emphasis on that particular point. If we're talking about parenting, that's a mission. And I'd like to summarize that mission in a statement here that I, I wrote. The mission is to build a solid, well-founded Muslim generation that is well-suited to carry the flag of Islam and deal with the world around them during their lifetime. Oh, yeah. And let's think about their lifetime. For the about kids that are the generation of the 2010s, 2011, 2013, or 2008, or 2005. These kids, God willing, would live maybe 70, 80 years. So they would be well uh, alive, inshallah, in the 90s. Uh, 21, uh, 
18 or 20, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, 20, 18, 29. Right? So we are preparing our children to live in that time, during that era, which we have no idea what it will look like. <laughs> we have no idea what, you know, the next 10 years will look like. So if you are preparing children for the next 60 or 70 or 80 years, you know, what kind of a preparation is that? Obviously, we are going to be predicting what kind of a, uh, a society, what kind of an environment, what kind of life there will be going on, what kind of issues, what kind of trouble, what kind of things that we will be facing. And we better have a good tool to predict that. Uh, by the way, uh, the flu vaccine that they give us at the beginning of the season is a prediction based on the last season's vaccine, right? Or last season uh, uh, problems. And this year they were all wrong, you know. We all got sick of the flu because the flu vaccine was not effective at all because it was a wrong prediction altogether. So can you imagine now if we prepare our kids to be whatever and it turns out that life would be completely different. So we have to think about that one here. That tells you how serious the problem is, how serious parenting is, because you are really preparing your children for a, for a world that you have no idea what it's like. You know, uh, will the schools be the same shape that they are these days? Will they be learning the same kind of math? Will they be learning the same way? Will they, you know, have uh, uh, same kind of issues that we're having? You know, what is it like? Technology, all these kind of things are, are, are way different. So, whenever we have a mission, there's always a few things that we have to uh, think about and, and, and prepare. And in, in the English language, they call them the five uh, W's and H, right? The who, what, when, where, and why, and the H is for how, right? So there's always who is responsible for that mission. What is that mission about? Uh, when will this mission be accomplished? And where and why and how? And usually how is the most difficult one. How is the most difficult one that really uh, will get most of our attention and most of our discussion. To start with who, obviously, the upbringing of the children is the responsibility of the parents. Not the parents alone, but almost uh, everyone else in their environment. Their family, their grandparents, their siblings, their friends, their neighbors, school teacher, the media, uh, television, uh, the street, the shops, you know, wherever they go, there will be an opportunity for uh, influence on these children. But who's responsible? Who gets the blame at the end? The parents, right? Just like anywhere else. The head of the institution is the ultimate responsible person. Can't just make an excuse and say, well, I did not know, I, I did my best. The head of the institution is the most responsible. So the parents are the most responsible. And they are supposed to be in control of what their kids get exposed to. And, you know, uh, making them appreciate their degrees of influence. They have to be the ultimate reference for the child. The day that the child will seek a reference outside his or her parents, the day the parents lost their child. And I mean the reference. You know, when children uh, are so young, they ask daddy and mommy, they ask papa and mama, they ask their parents almost everything. And they believe that their parents know everything. And when they discover that the parents don't know everything, then obviously they go somewhere else. Well, it's okay that someone else would know math more than daddy or mommy. It's okay that someone else would know more geography or history or what But when it comes to the foundation of the uh, uh, character, the foundation of the ethics, the foundation of the religion, it better be the parents. They have to be, you know, uh, always the reference. To a point, obviously, when the children grow enough and they can 
seek knowledge and religion from additional sources, or the parents help them through. You know, uh, I uh, at some point in my life, I, I started referring my children to uh, more Islamic references. I would refer them to certain websites or certain scholars because obviously they get have to get to the point that they eventually they will. Break away and, and go somewhere else, and they may not be able to find the father or the mother as the reference. But as as much as possible in the early times, the reference for the child should be the parents. So that is the rule. <clears throat> Obviously, the parents better have the right reference. Right? If the parents have the wrong reference, then obviously we, we have a problem. Okay. I'm, I'm getting to that. I'm getting to the parents and what they uh, should uh, <coughs> try to adhere to. The what, obviously, uh, seed, nurture, educate and guide, love and support, provide and discipline, teach life skills, knowledge, management, leadership, uh, all sorts of things that we have to give to our children to enable them to um, uh, go through life the way we, we, we said, uh, be solid, founded, well-founded Muslims uh, that, that can uh, carry the flag of their religion while at the same time be able to uh, deal with the world around them. We'll go to the when. When Sayyidina uh, <coughs> Ali, the Bihari, um, had a famous word in about dividing the span of, of uh, children upbringing into three stages. Right? The first seven, and the second seven, and the third seven. The first one is zero to seven, and then seven to fourteen, and then fourteen to twenty. These are the ones. These are the opportunities that we have to influence our children. Beyond that, you know, if they haven't uh, been uh, uh, raised properly or influenced, then God knows what. Uh, you know, we wait for for hidayah from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, <coughs> the where, obviously, the home the masjid, the school. These are the three main things that the child, <coughs> that the child uh, um, lives. Right? The home, if the child is in school, that's almost like six hours, 30 hours a week or so in school. That's not a trivial part. At home, you know, maybe three, four hours a day and the weekends. So that's another 30 hours a week. That's not much. Okay? So the home and the school really get uh, two big chunks. And if the measure doesn't play a role, then uh, obviously there will be a, a significant deficiency in, in the product that we're talking about. So the measure better get also a significant amount of time as, as much as possible. These are the three places that we have an opportunity to influence our children, and we better work on those. Uh, the home is, is completely in our control. Uh, the hours that they spend in the masjid is up to us to determine how many and what quality, not just uh, coming to the masjid as, uh, as fun uh, without a substance. It has to be both uh, fun and substance, something where they can enjoy. Uh, learning and good company as well as uh, strengthen the relationship with Allah. Uh, everywhere else is, uh, you know, a, a big open space, you know. Uh, they go visit other uh, family members or they go uh, visit friends or play with them or go play in, in, in a team or what have you. That's also uh, uh, have to be uh, considered because it happens and it has it better be also well controlled and well studied. 
Next is why. And obviously, the obvious thing that can summarize the uh, reason is it's a religious obligation or responsibility. Right? We are responsible for those children, no one else is. So it's our religious uh, responsibility, and our religious obligation, responsibility to take care of that. Finally, how that's where we are going to go into uh, uh, hopefully uh, much detail in, 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 in this sequence here. So we'll start with the who again. I'm going to uh, go back to who, and then after I finish the who, I get to the how. All right. So today we'll probably talk about the who, and maybe next week we'll start the sequence or the series of how. The who is, uh, as we indicated, the parents. What kind of parents does it take to complete the mission, which I remind you again, to build a solid, well-founded Muslim generation that is well-suited to carry the flag of Islam and deal with the world around them. Throughout their life time, from now until we said the 2080s or the 2090s. So the parents are husband and wife, and we know uh, that it starts by uh, a choice. Two people get together for marriage, whether they chose each other on the proper foundation or they chose each other on the wrong foundation. And we know very well the foundations that the Prophet peace be on him Cited in his hadith, yeah. in, in for, all right? for the male, the deen, and khuluq. Right? Deen is a relationship with God, and khuluq, the character, you know, the uh, aptitude, the way of, uh, of uh, conduct, and all these kind of, all these kind of things. Well, most of us males here, so let's talk about the male aspect of, of, of choosing a female. Uh, you know, I seldom have heard from any of the people that discussed marriage with me about their marrying one for other than beauty, number one. Right? Has to be beautiful. And that reminds me about maybe uh, seven or eight years ago in this masjid, we had a, a series for uh, undergraduates to talk about their issues and the way they um, conduct their lives and what kind of things uh, uh, are on their minds. And obviously marriage was, was one of them. And you know, you often hear, you know, I want to knock out, you know, I want, you know, a person that is so uh, beautiful or so perfect in, in all things. And, and one, of my, one of my comments to them, I tell them, you know, suppose you go to the, uh, uh, showroom and you buy a new car and you drive the car out of the showroom and you're so happy with it and bang you have an accident. All right, are you going to take it back to the shop and replace it and ask for a, another one? You know? Uh, or are you going to just accept it and continue it? Uh, the thing is uh, the emphasis on beauty is Undoubtedly, undoubtedly, uh, is there in, in most male uh, minds, right? And if it is not number one, it is number two, or very close to number one, right? Assuming that, quote unquote, number one would be the religion. Well, the Prophet's hadith it says, uh, religion has to be the number one in choosing a wife. And there's no doubt uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in my mind that uh, you know, most marriages uh, 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 follow this hadith. Right? Unfortunately, they, you know, they, they, they may consider deen as one of the factors, but not the prime factor, not the one factor, not the number one factor. The thing is, <clears throat> the mother and the father, as you can see, 
from the Prophet's hadith uh, must have a good foundation of deen and character, religion and character, faith and character, because they are the basis on which the rest of the family is going to be built. And if either of them is not solid in this regard, the foundation is going to be weak. Right? The foundation is going to be weak. Now, um, suppose these two people with all these good attributes marry each other. Now, what are they supposed to do to uh, make sure they have uh, what it takes to uh, accomplish the mission or to achieve the mission? Well, uh, the thing is, uh, when we say <laughs> Say yes. Actually, so, uh, so, so I mean, so, so I mean, every, everything you have said thus far is very clear. It was just, uh, it was just uh, one, one thing which I don't quite understand. So the, the mission itself is to make a, a, a Muslim uh, who has a solid, uh, you know, Islamic foundation, so that he can lead a, you know, a proper Islamic life in the future, right? Well suited to carry the flag of Islam. However, this. You know, this is sort of like a sort of like an overarching message, but without uh, really defining what that means. Like, like, for, example, like for example, saying like, uh, okay, I want I want this person to have one good manners, two to know his religion well, three to practice his religion properly, four to do you know like things that I can actually you know like I know that okay, did I achieve this goal or not? Like it's like a, a list, if you will, like a to-do list. If I, ca if I do these things, then he has the proper Muslim Islamic foundation so he can lead on and so on and so forth. Well, um, I, I agree with you. There's uh, no doubt that uh, details have to get in the picture, and I was leaving those to the how, right? right? Because, you know, obviously to do the how, you have to know exactly what, what you do. See, this is the, the big the goal of the objective, the and in the house, going to detail some of that. Yeah. But there is there is another question about that. Is it uh, a best of effort mission or uh, guaranteed or uh, supposed to be guaranteed mission? Uh, well, there's no such thing as guaranteed. All right, we uh, do our best, and success comes from Allah. Right. And Allah rewards us for our effort and sincere uh, intention, and that's all you can do. Even you raise your uh, your kids very well and in a proper Islamic way, and maybe they will not be good, good Muslims, or maybe they are not that uh, good persons in the, to the society. It's possible. Right? I'll take that as a comment. <laughs> okay. So the husband and wife are supposed to form a unit of society. All right. That's a unit. The family is a unit on which a society is built. And, and that unit is supposed to be strong. And what we mean by strong is it can support itself, it can support the uh, children that they are raising, they can also support the society around them. Uh, they, they are not uh, uh, by any means, uh, you know, uh, uh, fragile or uh, subject to fracture or uh, cracks or stuff like that. Uh, we are talking here about, uh, uh, I, I always give the example of one plus one. Right? One plus one in math is two, right? But in these kind of relationships, one plus one is supposed to be much greater than two. It should be an added value. It should be uh, an integration that uh, uh, produces uh, complementary uh, uh, 
relationship that 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 make it uh, holistic, that make it comprehensive, that make it strong. Um, obviously, uh, incompatible relationship, you may end up with one plus one is equal to a zero or a minus one, even a minus one. You know, if, if, if they destroy each other, and, and unfortunately, uh, you, you, you don't come up with, uh, with any <coughs> uh, strength out of that relationship. So, when 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 these two people get together, they have to uh, think seriously about what they should do to make that relationship uh, strong and. Uh, it enhances the best of each one of them. Uh, uh, Complement each other in the way that you fulfill each other's need. You 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 make this relationship um, the uh, so satisfactory that you don't seek any um, uh, anything outside that relationship. Um, the uh, husband should bring the best out of. The, the, or each spouse should bring the best out of the other spouse. Right? Uh, make that person reach their potential and beyond. Right? That's really the uh, goal of that relationship. It's not based on services uh, done to each other. Right? You do the laundry and I take the kids to school, I bring the grocery and you take the garbage out. Right? Did for that. That, that, that. that kind of uh, thing has to happen within a, a big frame of, like uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to mawadda wa rahmah, right? Uh, love and, and, and compassionate uh, care and... and, and uh, <coughs> so, the, the relationship have to be have to be really uh, strong in, in, in fulfilling the emotional and physical and social all the needs of the uh, the couple has to be fulfilled within and and uh, there has to be uh, a mutual agreement on the reference that they be following, right? and that reference should be uh, the Quran and the Sunnah, the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That should be the ultimate reference that uh, that they should uh, seek in in, uh, in in deciding uh, the relationship. Now, the. Uh, uh, Last week I, I listened to uh, uh, a recording uh, by uh, one of the imams uh, describing the husband-wife relationship and I really enjoyed it so much I actually sent it to Muhammad and to post it on YouTube. I don't know if he has done it or not. Yeah, he has done it. He did? Okay. Uh, he, he explains uh, some of these terms in, in, a, in a beautiful and simple manner. And let me just uh, emphasize one of them. He, he, he uh, took the uh, uh, word uh, uh, from the Quran about Hunna uh, libasun lakum wa ansum libasun lakum. And he, he uh, dwelt on this a uh, little bit and he, he described the meaning uh, of libas, which is a garment. Right? If, if you, the husband, is a garment to your wife and if the wife is a garment to her husband, the garment is a piece of cloth that you use to uh, shield you and protect you and cover you and beautify you and you know it, it, it uncomforts you, right? And it's the same thing for, for the other for the other uh, party, you know. When you think about that, you know what's closer to you other than your garment, and and, and and the wife should be the closest thing to you, and and likewise the. Uh, wife has to be to the husband, and the husband has to be to the wife. Uh, the garment is the one that also hides your uh, defaults and, 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 and secrets and, and private things, right? Likewise, so that kind of relationship has to exist. And any weakness 
in that relationship is going to show up. It's going to be a crack in the family, and a crack in the family will not produce uh, a good environment for raising children. Uh, if, if the husband and wife are constantly in disagreement and, and, and fighting and arguing and husband is threatening his wife by divorce and the wife is threatening by taking her bags and going to her parents and, and, and that kind of environment yields nothing but um, uh, uh, disturbed uh, uh, environment for, for the children and obviously that uh, uh, is, is a serious uh, uh, issue that, that has to uh, 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 to be avoided. <coughs> so, the one of the points that we emphasized last time is if you if you don't have it, you can't give it, right? And and that's basically one of the main points here, if, if the family doesn't have it, if the family does not have the uh, peace and, and, and unity and solidity and tranquility right, uh, in the home, you know, the children obviously are going to sense that and obviously that's going to influence them. If, if the parents consider home as uh, uh, a miserable place to be, the children likewise. That would be also a miserable place for them to be. If we, uh, on the other hand, we uh, think that the home, like again, you know, uh, the, uh, in the Quranic verse, uh, it says, Kunu ilayha. The Kunu ilayha means you dwell, you dwell to your uh, spouse. Uh, and, and, and dwell is, is, is a, comes from dwelling, you know, home, you know, that's, that's your home, your spouse is your home. So the home also should be uh, 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 a good environment for that. No loud voice, no arguing, no uh, insulting, no fighting, uh, focus on uh, useful things, uh, nourishing environment, uh, cooperative, you know, you name it, you know. Uh, on the other hand, you, you can see uh, a house with uh, uh, issues and, 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 and trouble and, and loud voices and all that is going to produce children the same way. And like we uh, said earlier, um, we should be the reference for our children. And if we are not the model, all right, obviously we are the model, whether we are good or bad, you know, for, for, for some time. Initially, we are the model. So if we are the good model, obviously, we are going to see that in our children. And if we are not, obviously, we are going to start on the wrong foot with our children. So that's the who. And uh, I don't know how, how long have we been talking now. We promise not to increase this more than a certain time. Is this enough or shall we continue some more today or, or what's up to you guys? Actually we are mm -hmm. interested in more. <laughs> I think I'm interested in listening to more. You are listening to more? Yeah. Shall I add more? <clears throat> okay. Oh, there is an exception for that. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, and that the same way we can have good persons that that don't have that good kids and uh, maybe bad persons that are producing the, the good kids. That was like the earlier. I'm going to take that also as a comment. Okay. <laughs> I'll be more silent. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going to add a few points. I'm not going to add too much, right? I'll add another maybe five to ten minutes and stop because also <coughs> I want my cough to get to a point where I can control it. Um, some of the points that I, that I have here, and these actually, now I'm supposed to get into the how, right? After, like I said, after I finish the 
uh, who uh, we're, we're going to get into the how. Um, so I'm going to talk about general things that we have to consider throughout the entire process from 0 to 21, right? not just limited to the first stage. The important thing is that our love for our children have to be unlimited and unconditional. Right? And I explained the word love last time. The love the proper way, not the love based on benefits and services and and and, and, uh, and uh, consumption, consumer love, like we said last time. Emotional love. Uh, so I, I, I'm, so for myself, like uh, I'm, I'm not speaking for everyone else. So my view on the, the idea of love itself is conditional. So, for example, I like I cannot bring myself. I cannot just bring myself to love someone who rejects uh, anything the Prophet of them said. That's just that's just hardwired in my brain. I cannot love someone who rejects anything the Prophet of them said. Okay. And so, even if it is a child, even if, even if it is it is my child, even if it is uh, you know someone who's close to me, it is just hard for me to swallow that. And so, it, it is conditioned up for me. It would be conditioned upon. You know, uh, I got the point. At least accepting that. I got the point. Um, the uh, hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he said, Unsur al Khaka e, Laliman al Madluma. Okay? Shall I say more, or this is a good enough? Hmm? Yeah, Explain more? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the thing is, your child is your responsibility throughout that period of time, okay? Beyond the period when the child becomes uh, uh, outside your domain of influence, okay, or your domain of responsibility, then you can treat that child uh, whichever way you would like, like you mentioned now, okay? But during your responsibility, you cannot have a chance to correct or influence or impact if you don't extend unlimited love. Okay, so it's your responsibility to love and care right, throughout to make sure that you have a, a, a chance to impact and chance to correct because it's still your, your responsibility. Okay, if it goes beyond your responsibility, then I can't uh, argue with, with your point. Okay, so, so 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 your thing is also conditional. So so beyond the so so beyond the certain age. Well, that's why I said you know my points that I'm gonna discuss now are throughout the period where you are responsible for the child. Okay, you can extend it beyond based on uh, you know the relationship and, and the circumstances and the bond. So you have to have an unconditional love. Okay, you, you don't ever uh, show your child that you uh, don't love him or you don't like him in, in any way, shape, or form, even if you are angry at your child. He has to still know that you love him unlimited, and maybe you are upset because of some behavior or some this or some that, but we are still the, uh, the uh, son-parent or daughter-parent uh, uh, with unlimited love. Now, um, unfortunately, some parents speak ill of their children, even in their presence. Right? You often hear parents that say this uh, uh, so-and-so child and, 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 and insult the child. Okay? That leaves the child with a feeling that they are not loved. Uh, but sometimes even some parents would say, well, he came by mistake. You must have heard that uh, from uh, some parent. Hmm? What a chai. Uh, or, or, you know, chai or came by mistake or all these kind of things that make the child feel unwanted and undesired or, uh, or if you uh, hit your child or what have you, you know, punish the child in a way that you show some uh, um, anger or, 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 or what have you. you know. so, you have to make sure that your child 
feels the love unlimited, unconditional all the time. Okay. And children need to be assured verbally, not just in action. Need to be assured. And uh, you tell them all the time. And, 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 and love can be expressed in many forms, in words, in hugs, in kisses, in, in, in uh, time, good time that you spend with the child, you know, educational time, good time, entertainment time, play time. Uh, you go into competitions with your child, you run uh, the marathon, whatever, you know. You jump together, you know, jump the rope, whatever it takes to uh, make the child feel that you uh, care and, and, and love for them. And That's number one. Yes. How can I express to him that I'm angry at him and at the same time I love him unconditionally and unlimited? Uh, it's like a <laughs> dilemma. Well, uh, have you, um, uh, you know, the question is how can I exercise both love and anger and disappointment at the same time? Well, uh, how did your mother do it? All right? I'm sure that mothers, uh, let's not talk about fathers. <laughs> mothers always show their love even with, when, when they are angry, when they are. But I'm certain. Well, when they are angry, they can't see. <laughs> uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you know that they, she loves you. you yeah, know. I know. <laughs> I know she loves me. So you actually, they, they have, they say that actually. Yeah. So my mom, for example, would tell me, you know, right. you know, I don't like you doing this, you know, and I'm saying this because I want the benefit for you and so on. So they would actually so, yeah. There's always a way to, to do both, and you have to be uh, creative and. You see, I don't want to give you a tool because not all the tools work all the time for all, you know, all the cases. So you have to be, uh, you know, uh, creative in finding the right tool for you. So that's that's number one, the, the love. Uh, number two is don't make your child go somewhere else to open up. Open up. All right. Open up. That means uh, speak about the issues or problems and all that. Always, you be the resource for your child to come to you and and, and share with you their uh, feelings, their issues. And so you have to train them from when they are little. All right. So you listen. That's the thing. You know, if they listen and you uh, punish them, then obviously you close the door. Right. Uh, tell me about what happened today at school, right? Or um, uh, tell me who bothers you uh, in the playground, uh, and, and they tell you what did you do wrong. Okay, they tell you, right? And and if you and if you uh, shout at them or punish them or uh, or, or tell them that you you, 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 you know uh, what you've done is so bad and you know all these kind of things in a, in a harsh way. Obviously, next time they're going to lie and they're never going to share it with you. They will go share it somewhere else. So make sure that you uh, have uh, a compassionate listening ears and attitude that your child always comes back to you all right, and tells you about their issues. So even when they are old, right? How many of you, uh, I don't mean to ask, you know, but raise the point. Um, um, stop sharing things with their parents at an early stage. I'm sure that many of us have done that. Some, some of us uh, still do that uh, with their one parent who is a good listener and the other parent, no. Some listen, uh, some share with their father, father, some share with their mother, some don't share at all. And, and obviously, probably friends and others may know more about them than their parents do. Uh, so you be the resource, not just the reference, be also the resource for your children to uh, uh, open up and and, uh, and, uh, and and blow steam and, and, and complain about other things that bothers them and, and all these kind of things. Um, another point is uh, uh, don't belittle your children. Not between you and them, or not in front of others. 
Belittling and demeaning is absolutely forbidden. Okay. You can criticize an action they've done, but you have to label the action, not the person. Mm -hmm. right? You know, like you mentioned the word okay? Mm -hmm. That's a description of the person, not the behavior. Right? And, and we, we, shouldn't, we should avoid uh, giving uh, descriptions, demeaning descriptions, even sometimes in, in laughing, you know. Uh, many parents, uh, they, they use it as a joke, mm -hmm. and it's a bad joke, right? Mm -hmm. If you uh, uh, make your children get used to uh, um, um, belittling uh, jokes, you know, they obviously are going to use it, and they are going to accept it from others, and it's going to be part of their uh, lifestyle. Obviously, we want to avoid that. Uh, the fourth item, and I think I'm going to stop after that, is always remember that if you uh, are um, making a plant, right, uh, and you are planting a garden, you leave enough space between the plants so each plant will grow and extend its roots comfortably. If you uh, put them close to each other, uh, the plant is not going to have enough room to grow and therefore will not have enough uh, nutrition, will not have enough sun, will not have... Uh, how does that reflect here? I'm not talking here about children uh, 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 next to each other. I'm talking here about uh, giving the child room to grow. And what I mean by room is your control. Is, is the space that you allow the child to have. All right? The more space you give to the child, and I'm talking here about space in terms of uh, uh, freedom, uh, opportunities, uh, uh, knowledge. That's the space I'm talking about, right? Without controls. The, the control has to be there. There's no doubt about it, right? But the control must be much bigger than the child can feel, right? The control must be much bigger than the child can feel. You, you don't exercise the control unless the child gets off the center, right? gets off uh, 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 or the, the main path or, 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 or uh, deviates. But as long as the child is in the center, make your circle big. Right? It's uh, a figurative kind of a description here, and I hope the picture is is uh, is making it through? Uh, is it or is not? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I I always uh, think about uh, appreciating where my child domain is and give them a little bit of a challenge beyond, so they can attempt to grow in that regard. All right? They they know how to add. Let's challenge by a little bit of subtraction. Not a whole lot. You know, I'm just giving an, an example here in, in something that is, but I'm talking here about many other things, like manners also, you know, uh, like uh, <coughs> uh, activities, right? Uh, you know, obviously at the same time, <coughs> you don't want to overload them to the point that they fail. You don't want to open up the circle that they can deviate too much or, or, or can make uh, lots of mistakes, you know, but they, they have to uh, find, uh, find the room to, to experience new things and, and uh, challenge, and meet new challenges. Uh, uh, Health-wise, I, I give that example as well. Health-wise, you know, I protect my children from the weather. They are not going to go if the temperature is, uh, is below uh, uh, 60 uh, and, and, and not above uh, 90, you know, uh, unless I, uh, you know, do all these uh, uh, things, and they are not going to even uh, touch a, a piece of dust, they are not going to get exposed to uh, any potential, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, coughing or sneezing. Obviously, you, you prevent them from the opportunity of developing their immunity. So is the case also of developing the opportunity 
of, of, of preventing them the opportunity to develop their own creative uh, 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 personality and and, 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 you know, and, and growing in, 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 in a balanced way. All right, we'll, we'll stop here and continue next time. Next time I will uh, start, inshallah, with uh, the uh, First uh, age group, which is zero to seven. Inshallah. Summary. Summary. Who's gonna summarize? Um, I, uh, I'm losing my breath here now. Take a few sips here. So it's a long mission. Mm -hmm. It's a long mission, and it should have five Ws and one H. Five Ws yeah. and one H. Okay. So All the right. first, the first thing that we are talking today is how. Uh, who who will uh, accomplish this mission? <laughs> who will accomplish the mission? And now, given uh, questions here, the parents. Huh? The parents. The parents. Yeah. Okay. Well, and 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 to do that, they have to to be cooperative. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And they should have the. And this is mainly based on the first choice. How how a man choose his wife and the wife wife or the and women and, and how they deal with each other in yeah. building their home, right? Mm. Next question. Mm -hmm. Next question. Summarize. Huh? Just summarize. Okay. What else did we talk about? Mm. Yeah. Muhammad. What? You remember yeah. anything from what you said? Give a point of, of the summary. Oh yeah, like everybody is responsible yeah. for the kids and people. Yeah. And that's yeah. friends, and friends, and friends, and then many people that are responsible for like things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, talk about the relation between the sparks and the house. <laughs> balance it with making sure that, that the kid feels being concerned about the consequences of what he does for example at school so if we're gonna keep like why, why not talking about the punishments of making something wrong instead of keeping like all the time listening and without having any problems with, with, with like what he did to make sure that he does not open up outside <coughs> and we balance that the way we talk to the kid and like listen to him with that with making sure that he concerns about the consequences of what he does. So, and I don't know what are the, uh, the punishment tools in general and how to do with this. I'm not going to pick this up for right now, there's no time, but I'm sure I'm going to ask this again later. Thank you. Muhammad sure. sure. I guess uh, one of the most important points is uh, making sure that the children in front of uh, People. This is very important point. Um, and the way you handle your children, there is no, I, I think there is no right answer, there is no definite answer. You have to figure it out along the way, uh, but you just try your best. Um, I don't know if we said that or not, but I remember raise your kids for a time different than the current time. I mean, prepare them for a different time than you, so than the one which I was brought on. Stop you at the last one. <coughs> Obviously, I agree with what they said. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad has a point. Okay, Muhammad. Okay, what about games? Like, 
Um, if it's like a violent game, <laughs> let me embarrass my father for this. Okay, so I wanted to embarrass him for a long time. So, um, <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> so if it's um, a violent game, shouldn't there be limitations or should be like should it be just like banned? Okay, that's a good question. Maybe we should answer this one here before we close. Okay. Yes. All right. If you have a violent game, all right, should we ban that or should we allow it with limitations? Right? What kind of limitation are you thinking? Here? Like um, I mean, like no killing, just no <laughs> maybe, like, <laughs> just like, maybe like just like killing. knocking out people, like not killing them with guns. Okay. Well, the no, game, no, I mean the game like, is all about that. No, <laughs> I mean like, like, that, like there's something that doesn't so show that like blood. Like, or something like that. Well, the game will have blood and... No, 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 I mean like doesn't, no, doesn't show it show. like, you know, like real blood. Oh, is, it, it just, is that, are these options in the game? <laughs> no, no, it just, it, it it's, shows it's not optional, it just doesn't or it show. Be what just if, if you broke your hand in the game? Can I, is it, can is I, it? Uh, can I try no, to answer this question? you can't do that. Okay. Because I also used to play these games. Yeah. So, so from experience, these games basically really in, like instill within you the uh, that sometimes so you can solve your problems with violence. Yeah. And they do it. It actually does it. It does so unconsciously. So you you actually in the game you you have a gun and you're just killing people and you think it's okay because you're not doing it in real life, or you're cursing. And you say you think it's okay because you're not doing it in real life. The problem is, uh, if you do something constantly, it actually starts after a certain amount of time. It starts affecting you by becoming part of you, by becoming part of your habits. No, I mean it's like I yeah. don't play it every single day. Yeah, yeah it just like like. Okay, let me let me uh, see if I can answer differently. What's the object of the game? Why are you playing the game? Uh. Fun? Cause fun. Cause it's fun, plus I like the stuff in it. Okay. You know, fun. I like guns. <coughs> now, let me tell you about an experience that I went through myself, okay? <coughs> I was escorting my son, who was your age, in the store. And the store had lots of toys. And a child and his father walking by. And child, Daddy, Daddy, I want that game. So the father responded and says, well, do you have any money to buy it? And the son said, no. He said, maybe you should start saving your pennies so you can buy it one day. Okay. Now, I thought of this answer a long time, and I discovered that this is the wrong answer. Because it's telling the child that if you have money, you can buy whatever you want. All right? as if money was a problem. Now, I discussed it with my son. On another occasion, he wanted to get something. I told him, what do you want it for? What do you need it for? OK, let's discuss it. If it is a good purpose, I don't mind paying for it. I don't mind any money. I can just pay it for you. But if there's no good purpose of it, then there's no need for it. If we can find an alternative, then we can work things things out. But like all of the like games and stuff are based on that. Let, let me just. I know I know you are reading ahead of me. See, that's a, a new generation who reads ahead of you <laughs> by by a mile, and you're still thinking. Um, I'm like, still here and there already here. <laughs> almost every single game has like some kind of violence. Like, right. Um, that's true. Like on um, like. Play Store. Right. But, um, you know, they are fun. Store. Okay. But what is the learning? What's the added value? What is the learning experience that you come up with? All right. Tell me. I learned to, new types of guns. New types okay. of guns? Okay. How to dismantle them. How to do what? Dismantle. How to dismantle them? Okay. Or are, are these real guns or just uh, imitation no, just guns? just like. Real. 
Real ones. Real ones. Yeah. It's like a simulation. Yeah. Like GTA and Grand Theft Auto. Well, I, I, see, I don't I, play I'm that. Aware, uh, aware from that, so I really don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm learning here. <laughs> okay. Well, we can get into the discussion. You see, that's that's what we need to discuss. Uh, okay. So everything in life, okay, as we learn, always have some advantages and disadvantages. And Islam tells us to weigh the advantages versus disadvantages and decide whether we should do it or not. Okay? Assuming it is halal. If something is halal, all right, we can look at weigh adventures and disadvantages. Obviously, if it's haram, it's out. Okay? So we look at this game. Okay? It's not haram. Fine. There's nothing obscene in it or anything like Just people fighting and as a result, you know, maybe we're killing an evil person. Okay, which is halal. Exactly. Yes. All right, fine. Okay, it is halal. So, like so there's... let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages. We heard one disadvantage now, right? Because, you know, it, it makes you immune to feeling bad about seeing blood, right? You yeah. get used to seeing blood. Killing should be haram. Huh? Killing is haram, right? No, but well, as we, we said, as we said, good people are well, not killing I mean, bad like, people. Okay. okay. I it's, that, it's right? not That's what I said. How can we judge that they are bad? Well, they, they are already labeled in the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, right? I mean, you, you, you don't challenge these things with the, with the kids. Okay. To me, right? to me, it looks good. It looks fun. It, to play. I, I want them themselves to come up with the challenge. Okay. Yes. To me, it looks like a fun game to play. I, I know fun. Fun is fun is one good aspect. But if, if that's the only good aspect, there is also fun in playing soccer. There is fun in, 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 in many other things, in driving race cars, right? Like my son loved to drive and play the race car games. And at the time, I wasn't too happy. But when he first got into his car to learn driving, <laughs> it, take, it, it took him only half a day, and he was driving very well. So I knew that all these you know, exercise of driving fast and, and, and race cars and all that was a benefit, benefit for him, right? But, well, it teaches me how to use a gun at least. Huh? No, and like, it, every racing game you find, you have to crash. Like, and then there's like missiles, you get stuff like bonus boxes, there's missiles, you knock out somebody's car. It's oil spill, you put, you have like oil spills, the bombs. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, you know. It's like so, my, um, Mario Kart. But tell me about what is the benefit, other than you already told me about you know about the types of guns. All right, so you, you play the game once and you know the types of guns, okay. Okay. So why should I play the game? Sometimes, like, you could, like, upgrade it, upgrade it, and then, like, they, like, a Okay, I'm playing the new game once and that's it. I learned about the new gun. Okay. All right. You could buy new ones. So that's the thing, you know. Tell me about the benefit about playing it. All right, we're spending hours playing. No, I don't spend hours. Yeah. Like I spend one. Spending minutes. One one time. Yeah, one in hour your, in your lifetime. No, no one hour. hour. Each like day. Each what? Day. <laughs> How many hours do you do you spend in your homework? Uh, a lot. Okay. How much? Like two. Two. So. That's not I get only like. Do, do you get that benefit from doing your homework at the same as half of what you benefit from your game? Because but the game is fun. You you are yeah, but you're going the wrong way again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can. The, the whole point is that you can find alternatives which will give you the same amount of fun, exactly. if not more. Exactly. I, I play football. So what? I yeah. yeah. So that's do more that's too violent game let, as let well. Let me ask you another <laughs> question. Let me ask another question. <clears throat> All the uh, the games of soccer and football and basketball and all that on the uh, on the PlayStation, whatever you call it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know the terminology. Xbox. So Xbox, whatever the names are. PSP. Okay. Now, uh, are, are, are you really benefiting from the game by watching, even if you go to watch the game, when you go watch people play, uh, are you exercising? Sure. You're exercising your eyes. Uh, yeah, exercising your eyes. You know, uh, according, according to the, uh, to the uh, uh, theory of uh, uh, evolution, okay, 
if this is all what we're gonna use, this is all what's gonna remain from our bodies now, okay? <laughs> Millions of years from now, we'll only have fingers and eyes. That's all what's gonna left of, of, the, of the human body, okay? Because it's the only two things that we, we move, right? No. No? He likes to walk, run, play, whatever. That means you are now getting into the field and playing yourself. Yeah. Okay? I, yeah. Not just watching. I play myself. Okay. Yeah, so so yeah. the game is good to watch and learn a few things, but eventually you get down and exercise it. That's how the game becomes beneficial. Okay? If if my little one sits down and watch a math game, she's learning math. If you sit down and watch a football game, you are learning football. So when you go out in the field and you exercise, you know how to, to play things. Yeah. All right? You watch good players, so you know how to how they do certain things, so you try to do like them. But this violent game, what are you trying to do? No, are you going to practice that? It, no, it's, it's not fun. You know, it's not just... You're like, holding a gun and you're shooting at like no, random like, robots. Okay, like, you've done that once and then... Like, then go out and practice it. Uh, okay, yeah. more people. Go play uh, paint... Uh, isn't there a game called the paint gun? actually have a gun and it's like you have paint balls. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so go do Nerf that. guns. Yeah. I do that. I do that all the time. I don't. All right. Yeah, so do that. Okay. So think about it, okay? I know that I we can't answer all your questions the way to your satisfaction, but at least we uh, get you to think about a few things. But you know. some people actually like... <laughs> like top in it from home. Huh? Like, I can't, like, play anywhere at any time. I'm, I'm not following. I, I can't hear you. Okay. Subhanahu wa alhamdulillah. Let's start talking to you later.